Welcome to The Brain Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, the human body is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, formulations, ingredients, skin health, something you may have heard about, read about, and you want clarification, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended or advertised on the program, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. You can also head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com, and you can order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off the websites, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and brightsideben.com, or call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our retinol 5% gel or our true serum made with lots and lots and lots of premium vitamin C, no fillers, no waxes, no oil, no water, no silicon, no preservative, no fragrance, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. If you're not satisfied with your skin health products, your skincare products as is, I understand why because 90% of it isn't doing anything. True Skin Health products are 100% active and functional. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, folks. We're talking about the ketogenic diet and hormones, and and, uh, we left off talking yesterday about phytic acid and phytates. There's so much misunderstanding. There's so much much misinformation, disinformation, just plain ignorance in the world of health and in the world of nutrition, in the world, in the news and politics, everywhere. We live in this world of dishonesty, this world of propaganda and misinformation and disinformation and people trying to sell us stuff and people not giving us the straight scoop. And it, it, it seems like that's just the way of the way of the world. If we're going to be able to cut through the muck and the mire, the, the baloney, we're going to have to slash our way out, folks. We're going to have to take our machete called critical thinking and slash our way out of this jungle of misinformation and disinformation. We got to be scientists. We've got to be investigators. We have to be curious. We have to question. We have to question everything. This is why in this program sometimes we get a little technical. We don't always, on the bright side, I don't just tell you what works. I tell you why it works and why things don't work. We talk about why illness occurs and why strategies can be applied and how they work. So you guys can make your own decisions. You want to be able to make your own decisions. You want to be critical thinkers. I don't want to just tell you what to do. There's a zillion health programs out there that will tell you what to do. Take this product. Take this formula. Take this vitamin. Take this mineral. But on the bright side, we tell you the whys. The bright side is not a sales pitch. It's a hardcore information. It's hardcore detail. It's hardcore information that you can use to make your own changes, to doctor yourself, to make real changes in your health and your life. That's my promise to you. When you listen to the bright side, as much as I can, every minute of the program, we're going to be presenting to you hardcore information for those of you who consider yourself scientists, who want to be scientists, not necessarily laboratory scientists, but but scientists in the laboratory of life. The bright side is life science for life scientists, whether you're a baker or a salesman or a teenager or a retiree or a mom or a dad, or for that matter, a healthcare professional. 
and we have a lot of healthcare professionals listening to this program. And I know that sometimes what I talk about here flies in the face of mainstream, mainstream understandings. Sometimes what we talk about is the exact opposite of what you hear from mainstream medicine or your mainstream alternative medicine, which unfortunately is more mainstream than alternative, sometimes anyway. So for the last couple of days, we've been talking about phytic acid and phytates, two somewhat similar. They're not, there's a little bit of a difference between phytic acid and phytates, but they're used interchangeably. If you spend any time listening to mainstream dietitians and nutritionists talk about phytic acid or phytates, it's easy to, it's easy to come away thinking that these are things that you want to avoid or somehow detoxify or eliminate from your diet. But as it turns out, it is a bit more nuanced than this black and white notion of phytates bad, eliminating them good. Phytic acid is found in all plants. And its main role, particularly in seed plants, legumes and beans, but its main role is to provide seeds and to provide plants with a source of nutrition, particularly with the element phosphorus. If you look at the chemical structure of phytate, it looks like a mandala. A mandala is a, is a symmetrical, geometrical form that is used in Eastern religions to uh, supposedly has spiritual significance. People meditate on mandalas. Well, the chemical structure of phytic acid is unbelievable. It's like a mandala. It's this perfectly symmetrical, circular structure. And I don't know much about the, spiritual, the spirituality of it. I can't talk about that, but there probably is one. But I can tell you that its geometry is just a thing of beauty. And I don't mean to go all chemistry nerd on you, but if you just Google, do a Google image search on it, you will see this incredibly beautiful chemical structure that is a marvel of organization and intelligence and, and balance and symmetry. So phytic acid's main role in the plant is to provide the plant with a source of phosphorus. It has other roles too. It's an antioxidant. It purifies, tox uh, purifies toxicity, uh, particularly something called aflatoxin. But its main role is as, as a storage form for the light bearer, phosphorus. Phosphorus is known as the light bearer because it has its ability to trap and project light. Phosphorus is amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Its essence is light. It's a light mineral. Throughout history, phosphorus has attracted the, the imagination, the attention of scientists and chemists and medical investigators. It burns hot. It uh, ignites spontaneously. It's used as, it, it's used as a weapon, a military weapon, although part, uh, some forms of it have been banned by the Geneva Convention because it's so darn hot and burns so vigorously. It burns spontaneously. It has to be stored in water sometimes because it burns spontaneously. It will combust. And in biology, it is incredibly, incredibly important for our life force, as you would imagine, given its ability to transmit light, to, to, uh, to uh, emit light. It's used in, it's a component of DNA, or genetics, and it's especially important for the electrical systems of the body, the highly electrical systems of the body, the brain, and the nervous system. And not surprisingly, plants are also dependent on phosphorus. In fact, there's very, very few elements that are more important to plants than phosphorus. And along with uh, sodium and potassium, you get your NPK fertilizers that have revolutionized agriculture. Phosphorus is a sparking agent. It's a key ingredient in matches. Matches are made with a type of phosphorus. And when you rub the match against this glass, you, the, uh, the pad of your, of your matchbook, which is made up of little particles of glass, poof, you get a flame. And it's this ability to provide spark that amps up the growth of plants. In the pre-industrial revolution days, farmers used crushed bone. They would mix it with a little acid, and they would release the phosphorus. And then somewhere around the, 19th, uh, the middle, middle of the 19th century, they figured out that they could make it industrially, and the agriculture revolution was born. Phosphorus is, is typically abundant in our diet. In fact, well, we underestimate the value of phosphorus because it is so darn abundant. In, it's found in, in, in great quantities. In fact, today, we get more phosphorus than we need because phosphorus is actually used as a food additive and it's actually found in a lot of junk foods and so phosphorus balance has been thrown off by our modern way of eating. All right, we'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. Back on the bright 
Inside, I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. We also have a blog for you at criticalhealthnews.com and videos on criticalhealthnews.com as well. Lots of videos, actually. And then also, uh, also pharmacistben.com. If you're interested in purchasing any of the, the Longevity products, you can do it right off the websites, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. All right, our number today, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls in the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the Bright Side. If you have questions about health and nutrition or anything we're speaking about today, we're talking phosphorus, all as it uh, regards phytic acid. We'll talk more about phytic acid tomorrow. Phosphorus is super interesting. I've, it's one of my all-time favorite minerals. We, it's super important for biological health and for botanical health, for the health of plants as well. But we get a lot of phosphorus. In fact, there are some folks who think we get too much phosphorus. There's something called the unritalin diet, which is an ADHD or ADD, attention deficit disorder diet, that is linked to or associated with reducing phosphorus. There was a pharmacist named Hertha Hafer, H-A-F-E-R, who I think 20 years ago or so figured out that a low phosphate diet could reduce the symptoms of ADD, of attention deficit disorder in kids. And that makes sense because phosphorus is a sparking agent. It makes things happen. And we get so much phosphorus in the diet. We don't get it necessarily from foods, although we do high-protein foods are, are going to have lots of phosphorus in them. But, but a lot of the phosphorus that we get these days comes as a food additive. Phosphates, because they're so active, do a lot of things. Phosphorus, I should say. Phosphates are, are a little different. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But phosphorus in the form of phosphates do so many things. They're so active. So they use them in, in uh, processed foods, basically, in soups and breads and cheeses. It's an emulsifying agent. It's especially found in soda pop, phosphoric acid. So these days, we get a lot of phosphorus. And this uh, German pharmacist, Hertha Hafer, figured out that, it turned, well, for some folks anyway, by going low phosphorus, going low phosphate, they could reduce ADHD symptoms in kids and in, in adults. Phosphorus is kept in a tight balance. It's super active, so the body keeps it in a tight balance with calcium and magnesium. And once you throw off phosphorus, ba phosphorus balance, if you're drinking a lot of soda or you're eating a lot of processed foods or a lot of uh, dairy foods, uh, dairy products are high in phosphates, if you're getting a lot of phosphorus, you can throw off your calcium balance, your magnesium balance. You could throw off your vitamin D balance. And this could be a source of a lot of illness, especially when it comes to the bones. The bones are kept strong via phosphorus phosphorus and via an interaction between vitamin D and phosphorus and calcium. And it may be that osteoporosis is also associated with excessive amounts of phosphorus. There's this delicate balance between all of these things, uh, parathyroid hormone and growth factors and calcium and magnesium and vitamin D. You can't throw these things off. And this is where the problem with food process, with processed foods comes in. Sometimes you won't even see phosphates on the ingredient deck. Sometimes they're a part of the natural flavoring complex that are found in processed foods. In the body, phosphorus is always combined with, or almost always, 99% of the time, it's going to be combined with oxygen in a form called phosphate. And this phosphate is an important blood energizer. It also helps stabilize pH levels. And phosphates, in turn, combine with things like iron to form iron phosphate and calcium to form calcium phosphate and sodium phosphate and potassium phosphate. Phosphates just do a lot of things. Although calcium gets all the press when it comes to the strength of the bones, it turns out phosphorus is a key player there, too. And there's a very important balance between these two things. So so by taking too or ingesting too much phosphorus, you can throw off calcium balance, and this can cause a problem with the weakness of the bones. It's the ratio, the balance, the, the uh, comparison between phosphorus and calcium that's relevant. That's why you can't just take calcium supplements if you want to get strong bones. This is why numerous studies show that calcium supplements don't help your osteoporosis. This is why they do studies on calcium supplements periodically, and they'll say, oh, well, calcium supplements cause calcification of the arteries or problems with too much calcium. It's because you can't throw off the balance. Calcium is in balance with phosphorus, and that's why foods, real foods, natural foods, whole foods are always going to be the best way to get your nutrients. I'm a big believer in supplementation, as you know, but 
they can't touch food when it comes to the perfection, the balance, how everything is in just the right proportion in whole foods, natural foods. I'm not talking about processed foods, whole natural foods. And so why you can't just swallow calcium supplements and expect your bones to get stronger, even though that's what we're kind of induced to believe through commercials and marketing interests. Health and nutrition, you got to understand a few things. You can't just take a pill. That's why we talk about the details here on this program. In the case of calcium for strong bones and for strong teeth as well, you got to get your calcium in the right balance with phosphorus. You need about a 4 to 10 ratio of phosphorus to calcium. When this concentration drops, when bone and, uh, when you're going to have bone problems. You're going to have dental problems. There's a lot of things that can throw off the balance of, ph of phosphorus to calcium, including too much phosphates in our food, but one of the worst is sugar. Sugar is a powerful, powerful way to throw off the phosphorus to calcium balance, and this is one of the main reasons why the standard American diet leads to bone loss, and for that matter, it's one of the main reasons why the standard American diet leads to calcification and leads to calcium stones in the joints and in the gallbladders and in the kidneys. And then we come to plants. Just like phosphorus is essential for humans, it is unbelievably essential and critical for plant growth, and that's where phytic acid comes in. Phytic acid is a storage form for phosphorus. It's like a little, it's a circular molecule with hooks on it. It's got six hooks, and hung on those six hooks, on each of those six hooks, is a little chunk of phosphorus. Phytic acid is a mechanism that locks up phosphorus that keeps the seed from growing. Phosphorus is a growth element. It sparks the seed into growth, but seeds aren't supposed to be growing until the circumstances are just so. So phytic acid acts like a safety. It's like, it's like a safety on a gun that keeps the gun from going off. It keeps phosphorus's power in check, preventing the seed from exploding into life. And this is why phytic acid has such a bad reputation, because it traps things, it, it holds on, it, it keeps the life force dormant, it keeps the life force sleeping. Many nutritionists will tell you that phytic acid is something that you want to avoid. Nutritionists will tell you that phytic acid is not a good way to get your phosphorus. And they think that they'll tell you that phosphorus is locked up in the phytic acid molecule so you don't get the phosphorus. But you know what? That might not be true. It turns out that bacteria in our gut, the so-called microbiome that we talk about on this program all the time, actually do have an ability to free up phosphorus from phytic acid. So it turns out that phytic acid might not be all that bad after all. It might be a good source of phosphorus. It's certainly a source of phosphorus for plants. Plants have the ability to break up the enzyme once they're growing. The microbiome, the good bacteria in the gut, can do it as well. In the journal uh, Cell Reports, February 2014 article, Phytic acid enzyme found in the microbiome that facilitates the release of phosphorus from the phytic acid, the phytic acid element. So phytic acid may not be such an anti-nutrient. On the other hand, this trapping mechanism, the ability that phytic acid has to trap things, it's called chelation. That's the technical term, and phytic acid is a chelation agent, chelating agent, and phytates are chelating agents. That makes phytic acid really helpful for detox. Phytic acid is a detoxifier. It chelates excess minerals. So in addition to possibly being a source of phosphorus, it also has detoxification properties. Same way that it chelates or magnetically attracts phosphorus, it can also chelate mercury. Phytic acid can chelate lead. It can chelate cadmium. It can be helpful against calcium deposits and calcium stones. That's right, this so-called evil phytic acid that we got to be so careful of is actually a major tool that can prevent, it, prevent, uh, prevent toxic, toxicity from heavy metals as well as calcification. All right, we'll come back with more good health information right after this on The Bright Side. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Bright Side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking about phytates and phytic acid. Tomorrow we'll talk, talk about how phytates can protect you from cancer. How do you like that? Phytic acid, especially from, uh, especially from colon cancer, the third leading cause of cancer deaths in this country. It goes by the name IP6. IP6 is the, is the anti-cancer name for phytic acid. And IP6, if you Google IP6, you'll get a lot of good information about how IP6 can prevent, uh, prevent uh, the formation of cancer tumors. 
really interesting. And that's one of the reasons why the bran of grains can be such powerful medicine. The bran is where the phytates are. Bran also contains lots of good things. A lot of the fatty nutrients are found in the bran. That's the part, of course, that we throw out or that we remove when we process our foods. But the bran, man, there's some really good stuff in the bran, especially rice bran. Rice bran contains something called squalane, which is really some, one of the most amazing topical skin nutrients or skin moisturizers you could ever use. I've been working with squalane for a long time. Squalane typically comes from sharks. Most squalane is also found in olives, but it turns out the rice bran and the oil from rice bran also is a good source of squalane. Anyway, we'll talk about all this tomorrow as we continue talking about the so-called supposed anti-nutrient phytic acid phytate. There, you know, it does have. You don't want to take your phytic acid or your fiber, I should say, too close to your minerals because you may lose some of the value of the minerals, but that's not to say that phytic acid is not some powerful, powerful health medicine. It is. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Maria in California. Good morning. What's up, Maria? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi. Hey, what's up? Um, well, basically, I have endometriosis. Okay. We can help you with that. Not a problem. What are you doing? Are you on any prescription medicine or anything? Yes, I am on prescription medicine for bipolar and depression. Okay, but not anything for the endometriosis? No, not for the endometriosis. How old are you, Maria? I'm 39. Okay. So you must have had some problems with your menstrual cycle for a long time. Endometriosis yes. is, is, is a pretty significant issue. Don't let them take your organs. That's what they, that's what they do for endometriosis. Yeah, is that what they want to do? I, yeah, they're trying to say that I need to have surgery because I have a... You don't. You don't. I'm, ta- I'm telling you, Maria, you don't. It's one of the most okay. twisted, evil things that doctors do, removing a woman's organs because of endometriosis. Here's the deal. Endometriosis is the excessive proliferation, the excessive growth of the endometrial lining, right? And that yeah. causes all kinds of problems, heavy bleeding and hormonal issues, et cetera. Here's what you need to understand about endometriosis. It's a, it's a female hormone issue, an estrogen issue, and it has to do with the balance of progesterone and estrogen, and it's a sugar issue. Those are the two major factors that you want to, those are the two major uh, places that you want to approach endometriosis. When I say hormones, estrogen and progesterone, I'm talking foods, fatty foods, and also the microbiome, which is gut bacteria. So here's what you're going to do. Number one, you want to do a food diary, and you want to eliminate any problem foods. You guaranteed 100% have something going on in your digestive system, which you must know. Constipation is typically involved, but it could be loose stools, it could be cramping or bloating, heartburn, stuff like that. Does that sound familiar, Maria? Yes. It always goes hand in hand, and only a boneheaded medical professional would ignore that classic symptom. It's the stupidest thing, and I'm sorry to get mad. I don't mean to get mad, but it's just unfair, yeah. Maria. Okay, so you so got to focus. trying to schedule me for surgery. Yes. How do they live with themselves? I don't know. I'd, I'd love to talk to your doctor. If you can get him to come on the bright side, let's have a conversation with him. And I don't want to be mean because maybe he just doesn't know. So anyway, yeah. the good news is, is this could be taken care of very quickly without any doctor okay. intervention. Do a food diary and eliminate foods that cause digestive distress. You'll find that fatty foods are typically going to be a problem. With your foods, with your meals, make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes, swigging down some apple cider vinegar, go to the health food store and get some extra bile, B-I-L-E, bile salts, and some lecithin. And you want to do those with all your meals, maybe a quarter teaspoon. Am I going too fast? You go to the archives if I'm going too fast. You're not going to be able to catch up because there's tons more. All right? And I got to go fast. But go to the archives and then review them. And this is true for anybody out there with endometriosis, which is somewhat, which is unfortunately not all that uncommon. So uh, focus on fatty foods and how you're processing those fatty foods. Use your ultimate enzymes, lecithin, bile salts, apple cider vinegar with all your meals. Get on the uh, the uh, Biolumin Nightly Essence, which is now called the Ultimate Nightly Essence. Three capsules in the morning, three capsules in the afternoon, three capsules at night. Eat as little food as you think you need. Don't overeat. Only eat when you're hungry. And I know that sounds silly to say that, but we eat a lot when we're not hungry. So only eat yeah, when you're I'm hungry. As well. well, it's all together. It's, it has to do with the blood sugar. I'm going to get into that in a second. Okay? Mm-hmm. So focus on your eating behavior. Try to eliminate the problem foods. Focus on fats and use probiotics. That alone will make a significant difference, by the way. That alone. 
morning. Fill up with veggie juice and flaxseed fiber, as we've been talking in the last couple of days. Then you're going to move on to the blood sugar. You need to stabilize your blood sugar. That means staying away from foods that spike your blood sugar, fruit juice, desserts, and cakes, and potatoes, and bread, and burritos, and anything that messes up the blood sugar. When you, uh, If you have a problem weaning yourself off of those foods, go get yourself something called glutamine powder. Do a quarter teaspoonful once or twice a day, and then up your protein intake, especially whey protein, if you can handle it. You may not be able, able to handle whey protein. If you feel gassy or bloaty after you do it, then maybe use hemp seed protein, which is a little bit more benign, although not as good a protein. Protein foods oh, also, f fish, meat, oh. that kind of thing. Yes? What about the um, ketogenic diet? That's that perfect. That would be something yes. that would be perfect for me. Perfect, perfect, okay. perfect. But the problem is, if you're having problem processing fats, you've got to be careful with it. So you got to watch you out. Have avocado and yes, um, but watch how you respond to the fats. Avocado is good, but coconut oil is the best. So a teaspoonful, uh, maybe a couple teaspoonfuls of coconut oil. And then there's some individual supplements that are very helpful for endometriosis. Your ultimate EFAs. You want three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. Zinc picolinate, 50 milligrams a day. Vitamin A, 20,000 international units a day. Vitamin E, 400 international units a day, and the Ultimate Selenium, 400 micrograms a day. Now there's tons more. I just don't have all. I don't have a lot of time to give you all this, all of the information. But that's a great place for you to start. And if you do everything I just told you, Maria, I'm guaranteeing you that you will notice a dramatic, and I mean a dramatic difference in your symptoms. And it should take one or two cycles, is all. Okay. And I'd love it if you okay. call us back after one or two months and let us know how you're doing, so everybody can hear. There's way more. This, we just scratched the surface. But just what I told you, you're going to notice a significant difference. Okay. And then I can just go in and search the archives? Yeah, search the archives and just search for endometriosis and then review the last couple of weeks. We've been spending a lot of time talking about fats and the ketogenic diet. Okay? Okay. Great. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. God bless you. Have a All beautiful right. day. Okay. And yeah, that just ticks me off when they want to take out your organs because they can't figure out what is going on. Somebody has to call a pharmacist on the radio to, to get decent health information. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Diane, welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on? Good morning, Dan. It's Good morning. Is this my friend Diane that's always yelling at me on Facebook? <laughs> that is you, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're always yelling. I can't, you know, you can't yell on Facebook, but if you could, I think you would be yelling. <laughs> How are you doing? How, how's the truth working for you, by the way? Pardon me? How is the truth working for you? Uh, I'm seeing some results. On, uh, now, you're on the retinol, right? On the retinol, the... Hello? Diane? Yeah. Diane? Did we lose Diane? I don't know. I think we lost Diane. Hey, Diane, call us back. I'll get you first up. I don't know what happened to you. All right. We're going to take a break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. All right. We're back on The Bright Side talking to Diane in Nebraska. You there, Diane? Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. What's going on? How can we help you? Okay. My husband is 69, and he's okay. feeling shingles in his ear. Okay. For the past 10 or so days. That's awful. And in in the ear or on the ear? It's on and inside of the ear. It goes, okay. I guess, it goes to the ear drum, but okay. in the nerve. That's not a good thing. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Here's the deal. Shingles shingles only happens when the immune system is compromised on some level. So what you do, the way you deal with shingles is you build the immune system and you take everything out of the out of the out of your life that suppresses the immune system. And that usually means foods. So we'll, we'll approach this from two angles. First of all, anything that uh, that throws off his blood sugar or is pro-inflammatory or messes up his digestive system needs to be avoided 100% while he's got the shingles. And, and you know, even when he recovers from the shingles. And this, all these strategies will speed up his recovery too, by the way. Sugar is, a, is one of the biggest enemies in all of its disguised forms, including bread and pasta and cereal and potatoes and you know anything that, that breaks down into sugar and throws off his blood sugar. Treat him like a diabetic. The ketogenic diet would be awesome for him. So low, low, low sugar, low carbohydrate, as much as possible. Uh, that doesn't include veggies, though. He's got to uh, be great if he could pound the veggie juice and the fiber to help fill him up. Secondly, more protein. 
protein, and that will help wean him off the sugar, and it will also give him some power to help fight the infection. Uh, the, the immune system is driven by protein, especially glutamine powder, which also doubles as a, as a way to wean, off, wean him off of sugar, five or uh, maybe half a teaspoonful once or twice a day of glutamine powder. The next thing you're going to want to do once you've taken care of the inflammatory foods, foods that he reacts to, and, and blood sugar spiking foods, is use nutrients to support the immune system. And there's a lot of them. I'm going to go down them. I'm going to run down them real quickly. Selenium, one of the most important minerals, along with zinc. 400 micrograms of selenium, maybe even 600 micrograms of selenium, and 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate. Vitamin C is your quintessential immune boosting vitamin. 5,000 milligrams a day in divided doses, even up to 10,000 milligrams. As long as it doesn't disturb his stomach. And then also uh, vitamin A, 20,000 international units a day. And then the healthy start pack. And then have him sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Have him doing nine capsules a day on the, uh, on the ultimate essential fatty acids, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. Anything that he could do to support digestive health in terms of nutrition will also help him. The ultimate enzymes after all his meals, apple cider vinegar. And then also, uh, the, of course, the ultimate or bioluminitely essence now called the ultimate night essence three in the morning three in the afternoon and three at night the more food he eats the harder it's going to be for his body to fight the infection so caloric restriction the ketogenic diet appetite suppression anything he could do to avoid uh, to minimize his his caloric intake is going to help and then last but not least one of the all-time great immune boosting foods is good old bone soup which I know you've heard me talk about a zillion times make him homemade chicken soup okay and then activating the, the parasympathetic the relaxation nervous system is always helpful for all healing and all immune boosting. Relax, lighten up, massage, hot tubs, foot rubs, anything you do to relax the body is going to help him heal. Okay, Diane, God bless you. I'm sorry that happened. That's that's all. Shingles is just absolutely miserable. Okay, I'm going to let you go, Diane. Thank you. Hey, Have a be- yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. Uh, what about vertigo? He has a terrible Sa- time. Treated all the same way. That's inflammation in the inner ear. It's all the same thing. It's a part of the inflammatory process. Everything I just told you goes for vertigo as well. Vertigo right. is an infl- inflammation in the inner ear, and it's related to a, uh, an activated or a jacked up immune system. Okay? okay. All right. Hey, thank thank you. you so much. Take care, Diane. Okay, let's uh, move on to Joe in Tennessee. Greetings, Joe. What's up? Hi. Hi, Pharmacist Ben Sears. Can you hear me clearly? I hear you loud and clear. What's going on? Okay. Thanks for accepting my call. Sure. 58-year-old, 58-year-old female diagnosed with parotid gland tumor. She had okay. surgery in, in 2012, yes. and a couple months later, the surgeon wanted to do more to remove the tumor. Well, okay. she's in a lot of pain. She accepted the chemo and radiation, That's and awful. but that was to no avail. Now the doctors say that she may have lung cancer because they see that she has some scarring on her lungs, okay. and they want to do radiation injection and surgery. That's terrible. That's terrible. Here's how you deal with cancer. Here's how you deal with cancer, wherever it is. You strengthen the body. From a nutritional perspective, the way you want to approach cancer is you want to help the body deal with the cancer. You follow me? It's not so much the medical approach where you kill the cancer, although sometimes you need to do that. But from a nutritional perspective, you want to strengthen the body. And you do it just like I was talking with Diane earlier, from two directions. And I don't know how long you've been listening to this program, Joe, but you'll hear me saying the same thing over and over again. Okay? Because it's really all the same stuff. So whether it's a tumor or a Meniere's disease or vertigo or, or, um, or shingles, you strengthen the body. You do it from two directions. You eliminate any problem foods, anything that's getting into the body that weakens it. Calories weaken the body. So caloric restriction is one of the best ways to deal with cancer. You need nutrients, but you don't need calories. Calories are work for the body that, that uh, divert resources from fighting cancer. Do you follow me? So intermittent yeah. fasting, caloric restriction, the ketogenic diet. All these are ways that you can uh, uh, save or or, uh, reserve the body's resources for dealing with cancer. Uh, But you do need nutrients, and the nutrients should be in concentrated form. The Healthy Star Pack, that's a starter right there. Just start with the Healthy Star Pack. Bone soup uh, with the cartilage. The cartilage has wonderful immune-boosting properties, so make sure the cartilage is dissolved in the soup. High doses of vitamin C. In fact, for for this gal, she, she needs to not even mess around. I would be going intravenous nutrition especially intravenous glutathione. I don't know how what her resources are. Some 
sometimes it can be expensive, but assuming she can do it, intravenous glutathione, intravenous selenium, intravenous uh, B vitamins, and intravenous vitamin C. If she can't go intravenous, at least take them, 400 to 600 micrograms of selenium, uh, an amino acid called glutamine, along with whey protein powder. That will help her build her own glutathione in conjunction with the selenium, something called NAC, NAC, N-acetylcysteine, 600 milligrams a day, making sure she's using her ultimate EFAs, three capsules in the morning, three capsules in the afternoon, and three capsules at night, and then supporting digestive health, using more protein, less sugar, her ultimate enzymes, her probiotics, the good bacteria, vegetable juices like they're going out of style as long as she doesn't react to them, and then more fiber, especially from flax seeds. Joe, if she does everything I just told you, she will feel better. Even if it doesn't kill the cancer necessarily, her body will be stronger and she will feel better, and that's the main goal when it comes to dealing with cancer. Help the body get stronger so she feels better. You follow me with all this? Yes, sir. There's tons more stuff that you can do. I Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time, but that's a great place for you to start. And God bless you, Joe. Good luck with everything. I hope that works out. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I apologize. All right. Uh, let's go to Canada and welcome Jeff to the Bright Side. How are you doing, Jeff? Hey, pharmacist Ben. I'm so grateful that you're taking my call. My pleasure. What's going on? I got a 10-year-old little girl that's on oh. peritoneal dialysis. She has oh, been I'm for sorry. a couple of years. She's got a condition that's been diagnosed with something called FSGS, which is like a glomerulonopathy. Right. She's on an ARB drug that I hate because I think it's killing her kidney. Is this your, your little girl? She, what's that? Is this your little girl? This is my little girl. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, so so she was she was uh, was it a birth defect? She was, no, she she developed it. She was diagnosed with nephrotic syndrome when she was four. She developed peritonitis, and when she got the peritonitis, she had a whole bunch of antibiotics and the dye from the actual scan that they used to look inside mm. her. And the mm. combination of those it things damaged the kidneys. Kidney failure. She never recovered. She's been on dialysis since. They got her on an antihypertensive. They got her on this ARB, and they got her on a biweekly hemoglobin stabilizer called Darbopoietin. What is she something. doing for nutrition? Where's her nutrients coming in? Well, her, I'm doing the best I can, um, but her nutritionist has given me advice where they're, because her urea has affected her taste buds so dramatically that oh. they're just overly concerned with getting calories into her, and, yeah. and having, having listened to you and, you know, Dr. Wallach, I want to get her on a supplement recipe. Yeah. I, I want to do it. I, right I only got him, Jeff. I can't give you a good advice in a minute. Can you send me an email? Send me an email with your oh, phone sure number, can. and I'll give you a call. Ben at ksco.com. I, I wish I, I, I only have a minute. And it's way too complicated. Give me a call. Uh, or just send me an email, and I'll give you a call. Okay, put your phone number in there. I'm so grateful. Thank okay, you so much. God bless ben. you, my friend. Take All right, let's. Uh, Okay, got about 30 seconds here. Truth Raider, once again, you get the last word, buddy. <laughs> Benjamin, I think I need two minutes. I know. I apologize, man. <laughs> but what's quickly, what's going on? Uh, I don't know if this is a pre-stroke condition or what it could possibly be. No, you don't. Be. What do you mean pre-stroke? What are you talking about? Uh, from the midsection down to the lower part of, part of my feet, from the midsection all the way down, I have the sensation like if you've been riding a bicycle, working out like, with weights, and then you have that's, not that's a called trouble, acidosis. Not a cramp, that's called acidosis. That's called. That's called acidosis, big fella. You're burning. You got lactic acid going on there, and that sounds to me like either the muscle's breaking down for some reason, or you've been working out. But yeah, you yeah, I've been working out. Carl, call me. Uh, give me a call, man, because I, I can't help okay. you on the radio. All right, buddy. All right, All right I'm Pharmacist Ben. You've been listening to the Bright Side. I'm sorry if we left you on hold, but you got to call early on the Bright Side. Eight four four two three six sixty ten tomorrow. All right, we'll come at you with more good health information. We'll talk phytic acid, and we'll talk about phytic acid and anti-cancer tomorrow on the Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.